Welcome to the Elite Forum Podcast, Episode 2. Corey Meredith. Corey is the uh, assistant strength and conditioning coach with Kansas State Football. Corey's been on point with the Elite Forum system for several years now um, and really had a good time, really had a good time catching up with him. Quick prologue before we uh, jump into that conversation with Corey. I'm wanting to let people know basically why. Why did we start the podcast? Um, what, are, what are our goals with it? Um, and it's really pretty simple. The idea is uh, open conversation, talking shop with not just people who we work with directly uh, day to day, people who use the system, but in a larger sense, uh, just people in our athletic performance community, people who touch on the lives of people sort of in, in our world. Uh, and that can include people involved with business, people involved in investing with business, etc. So Corey obviously is sort of a fastball down the middle in, in terms of that. So one of the better places for us to have an early conversation. Um, but the idea, of course, is to let uh, coaches, guests drive the conversation. Tangents are welcome. Um, I'm going to reserve the right to get smarter about doing these things. Uh, appreciate the patience along the way. And from there, uh, we'll just broaden it out release these every two weeks and uh, just sort of let the chips fall where they may so uh, so far we've recorded four it's been been a very good time uh, so without further ado let's get to Corey Meredith uh, this year has just been different for us as far as adjusting to new stat I mean we got real I don't want to say comfortable but you know you just know know what you can and can't do and we're figuring right. those things out but he's Obviously, the the liaison, or I mean, he's the guy. Like the the coaches aren't talking to us; they're talking to him. Sure. So he's and then it kind of trickles down. Yeah, making sure you he's available, and then just some of the logistics have changed as far as like scouting. We didn't have scouts in all year round. Now we do things like that. So Dawson's usually he gets his workout in. About three thirty, four o'clock in the morning, and then Damn. we do our groups, and then he's upstairs, because he also has the administrative side of it, because we're building new facilities for baseball, new facilities for Olympic sports, and then you have, I mean, basketball is kind of self-contained already, they have their place. Right. So, so let's back up a little bit, because yeah. uh, I was actually gonna to lead in asking about like what that you know, kind of how that was when you found out that transition was gonna happen, right? So you're kind of losing a legendary football coach, yeah. right? So you guys knew exactly. Maybe I shouldn't say exactly, but obviously expectations were well established. You guys had your routine, mm -hmm. and so then they start going through the hiring process and. You know, what goes through your mind kind of at that starting point? Yeah. Let's talk about that. Well, fire away. <clears throat> so, heard about Coach Kleiman, and I was honestly excited. I liked I liked the fact that they're willing to give the opportunity to a guy that was FCS, you know what I mean? Like, because I came from a small school. I don't think necessarily small school football gets the credit it deserves. They won four nationals. I like the fact, because I hate losing. I hate it. Winning is fine, but I hate losing. And that's what he did. So I was excited about it, but then also very nervous because they had a guy, he has a guy up there. And we knew that. And so I had gone through this once before, a little different scenario at Kansas when they got rid of Mangino. And there's all types of things that go on with, with those processes. And as an assistant strength coach, you don't hear about it. You kind of hear it around about way. It's not never, I think it's a lot of rumor mill. You just don't know. We were told we were safe there. And then one day, administrator walks down, says, hey, I need to talk to you. Said, you guys are done. We're like, okay, it's interesting. So we went from thinking we were pretty secure to like kind of shady like we didn't even get like a severance so like you're gonna you're done on friday you will be paid your vacation that's it and i was like wow like that was interesting so 
obviously when this thing came around, we knew he had a guy. And like, and you I, had that in the back of your mind. Like, oh, that's the way it had gone before. Yeah. I was like, I think we're done. I mean, there's, and I don't, I don't blame the guy. I mean, I feel like we have a good reputation as a strength staff, but like if I'm a head football coach and the guy that's in front of my athletes daily, year round, I want to be able to trust that guy. And so, I, I mean, if a head coach wants to bring, I think that's the, the smartest hire that he makes. So if he already had somebody, it's like, well, I'm mad, I may mad at you, but I got to go get some boxes. Right. So then it kind of, we were kind of just hanging out, trying to hear the word. We were supposed to hear before Christmas. And that kind of came and went. And then we found, or maybe it was, I can't remember it. It was right around Christmas. And he, and basically it's um, Jim Kramer was this guy at North Dakota State, decided to stay up there. He's got family up there. He's got deep roots there. And it just, I think it just made sense for him to stay. And I think Kleiman was fine with that. And I think that Kleiman did his homework on us and, and felt like it was a safe play to keep us intact, you know? Because I, I, don't, I don't know if he's not, it's not like, a, a, I mean, there's a culture shift, obviously, but he, he didn't, he didn't see it to be needed down here, I think. And so we got the word, and it was all good. So, but yeah, we and, were... And exhale? Yeah, big <laughs> exhale, you know, because I, I just had a kid in October, and so it was like, oh boy, you know, to be able to, to possibly have to uproot this whole thing is... is right. Two because kids now? I have two now, yeah. yeah. And it's like... Because, I mean, we've been here. I've been here for 10 seasons. You know, it's just, I mean, you're you're planted here. I have two kids here. And so I was like, this is going to be big. And you just don't, you know, don't know. Like, assistants, I feel like sometimes we don't know. We come in, we coach, we work, we go home, a lot of that other stuff. I just don't think, I mean, at least the staffs I've been with, we don't, like, Coach Dawson knows and then he tells us, but a lot of times we don't, we don't get it on the front end. And there's a lot of inner workings. I feel like that I don't know about, or maybe don't understand. I don't know, but it, it gets a little bit dicey at times where you're, you know, like, I don't know what's going to happen. So, yeah. That's yeah. It. Cause even, even from our perspective, like when the transition was happening, it seemed like there was a delay. And so, you know, we like you guys, so we were yeah. wondering what was going to happen and worried about you, yeah. if you will, you know. So, uh, and it did seem like it started creeping into, well, those guys are going to need to get coaching. Mm -hmm. Like, it's almost, almost yeah. sort of beyond, like, not that there's a deadline for those kinds of things, but um, when you'd want to do anything, if mm -hmm. you were going to make a change, so... And I think that, and recruiting too, I think delayed that because I know those uh, guys, yeah. they would hit it hard. I mean, it was like, I feel like climbing, they flew him in, they do a press conference and I felt like he was back out, like we're on the road going, you know? And I know our recruiting coordinator, he was out on the road because he was allowed to go and uh, just trying to just keep everybody settled down. And so I think that was a big thing for him. It was like, hey, let's, because there's that early signing period right now. and they, i think he was making sure like we we got everybody and then anybody that they wanted to go get so that's that smart sense. i think i mean recruiting is obviously if you recruit good guys it makes us better too so it helps I mean, yeah we're, <laughs> we're not mad about that at all but yeah it was it was a little uh touch and go there for a while all right it's probably nice that he jumped in and got after it right away. Like, no, I like it. Mean, sets a nice tone. And, no, the energy and that, that this staff has is, is really cool. I mean, it's it's way different. Our staff, obviously, the old staff was a little older. And so there's just there's just different energy, you know. So that, that's been a good thing. I think the guys really appreciate it. Um, the, guys, the guys in the players? Or the, the, player, yeah, the, the players, yeah, the players. The players are appreciating this. To, Did you see that? Did it translate when they came down here? Came in the weight room. Like, could you see a? Um, not that they, not not that in the sense that it was bad going to better or anything, but just any sort of cultural difference that. No, I mean, I, I always. I mean, I think every year, it's always different with the team, because you. All right, so you 
you remove all those seniors, those leaders, and some of the, you know, even even your your good locker room guys. I mean, you have like we have a, a good walk on program that brings in, you know, good Kansas kids that like working and they have, you know, they have great personalities and they're just good locker room guys. You know, they play some special teams and all that, but you, you clear that out at the end of a year, like they're gone. So now you have a new team and you have, you have the guys that are now seniors or are going to be counted on to be leaders or want to step up and be leaders, but everybody's kind of feeling things out. And then I think you have the rest of the group that are, you know, say I was a, red shirt freshman I expected to play and then I didn't so then you kind of go in the tank and then it's you know so you're you have those kids that kind of mope around and and so, but so everything resets I feel like everybody comes back into the weight room just ready to get after it like hey this is the start so it's clean slate we're going so I don't know if the that staff changeover changed their mentality coming in but then I think as they start, because th these coaching staff went hard on trying to get to know these guys and showing them, hey, you can trust us. You can, we care for you, you know, I, which is huge. I think that's our whole deal in the weight room. We want to, I mean, if you can't show that that you care, then they're not going to trust you, and it just, you know, goes from there. And I think those coaches understood that, so they got in, and, and then it just, you know, everything kind of materialized and. And, and got better so we had I think we had a really good off season we ran a little differently than we had in years past uh, we did like we used to test before spring ball coach Snyder was look, look, looking at numbers like what's his 40 what's his bench you know it's, football coaches love bench press sure but he wanted to look at that before spring ball like that was an evaluation tool for him and then coach Klein came and he's like uh, that's for y'all not, not us just you do it how you want to do it. So we decided to move everything to the end because you have basically, you know, a winter off-season training block, then you go to spring practice, and then you have this almost dead time. I mean, the guys are still required to lift and run, and but a lot of times it's those kids are like, Ugh, you know. <laughs> so now we kind of, by bringing the testing period to the end of the semester, kind of was able to pull their focus because they still have their individual goals. Like, Hey, I want to run this 40. I want to right. clean this. So it, it at least had them locked in and we could finish the semester. Well, you know, we weren't necessarily training to train, which I thought was good, which we've done. We used to do at Kansas. And so that was one change we made. Liked it. I think the guys did too, but then it sets them up better for summer. And we kind of knew where they're at. You know, you don't have, you're not stabbing in the dark right a lot of times some actual benchmarks and stuff yeah we know you know you're not they're not far off and you didn't have like a lot of times i mean they, they'll go home for a month or whatever and just get totally out of shape we didn't necessarily have that we had three weeks but i mean they were raring to go when we we left them it wasn't a training just a training to train period so we got gotcha. we liked that and so we got to kind of dive right into to summer without too much drop off that's what, I mean that's the great thing like the elite form I mean that to do the velocity stuff I mean we I mean we'll dial those guys in in a week and then we then we can really go and I, that's been huge for us so we do that all the time so backing up kind of a half step it sounds like not only obviously you guys were retained right but then the new uh sport coach staff, if you will, football coaching staff, mm -hmm. basically said, trusted you guys enough then almost right off the bat to kind of just do it how you want to do it. Yeah. Is, is that right? Yeah. I mean, there was, I mean, obviously there's obviously some input on it. Sure. You know, I think the big thing was like our, I know, I know coach Kleinman talked to our football team and probably talked to our leaders and said, Hey, what, what you like, what you don't like. So we changed up some running stuff and we were fine with that. <clears throat> Um, so they were probably not as good a shape. Condi they probably weren't in as good a conditioning as they've been in years past, but there was probably a little bit less rubber off the, off the tire that, at the end. Gotcha. Too. Gotcha. Um, but that was probably the only thing that they really said, Hey, let's, you know, let's back this down. Let's make it, you know, more 
more drill work. Like they really, because and then again, yeah, I mean, you're you're installing entire new offenses and right, defenses, right. so that really took precedence, which also makes sense. It's only X amount of time. Yeah, so. I mean, I I always look at it. I mean, in a perfect world, yes, you know, you want everybody just to be metal eaters, and and but they're not like. These kids come here to play football, not to lift weights. Right. So we have to be, I think we have to be very realistic and understand our role and obviously do it to the best of our capabilities, but understand and like, it's not like we're not numbers guys. You know, you know, we're not, I mean, it's cool. You want to see guys improve and that's obviously a, a good measurable, but at the end of the day, like we gotta get better at football. No, that's right. Yeah, Wins I mean, and losses are kind of a yeah, big deal. Like it's, you have to get better at football. It's right. Bar none. So in any way we can facilitate that, let's do that. You know. And I would assume, but you know, you tell me. Um, like, is that how you guys think top down? Like, kind of stat, not just strength staff, but call it the staff across the board that's addressing football. Like whatever the priority list becomes in terms of kind of calculating another W. Um, is that kind of the way you think about things or? Um, or is that so totally out of context it doesn't even, it's a bad question. No, I, I think it's a good question. I mean, it, it's all about wins and losses. But, you know, just like I said, every team, like I always look at it as every team is different. So you have, like we talked about, you know, coming in in January, what, it's kind of like what you have. I think you have to adapt your off-season program, your spring practice, your summer conditioning to what you have. You know, you can go back to, you know, 2012, that, that year that we ended up in the uh, Fiesta Bowl, and we were, like, ranked one in the – but that team was mature. So we, we could do things a little differently with that team because they police themselves. Um, so it wasn't like, like there's, for instance, like warm up. There's instances where we're, we will have an up down call on everything because that's what, what's required because you have young guys don't know how to work. There's probably some immaturity. So it's like, hey, no, nah, we're, we're going to pull focus. This is how we're doing it. As where a, a mature team, it's like, hey, we're going to warm up. This is what you got. And they've established themselves as good workers trustworthy and all that so that i can trust that they can go over and do that warm up and do 10 reps or whatever it is and and be fine with it and so like that's where like that's how we kind of like when we're in here in the weight room let's like well, what do we have how do we need to approach the warm-up how do we need to approach this workout because i mean yeah we're getting them stronger we're getting them faster but there's so many other things that will rear its ugly head in a football game that we'll see in here. Like if you're skipping sets or you're skipping reps in a weight room, you're probably gonna take some shortcuts on the field or at practice or whatever it is. So we need to not only address strength, conditioning, but we also need to address those issues too. You know, and I think that's, kind of the intangibles of strength programs you know who runs oh, them well sure. and who do, you know like I, I just I can't if you if you show me you can be trusted then I will allow you to do a lot more than if you show me you can't be trusted it's sort of like life yeah I mean it's really <laughs> what it is I mean it's what it is I mean this is a little slice of life I mean really I I always look at it as you're if I can, if I can affect one thing for these guys is, is if I can affect their work ethic. If we can improve that, when you leave here, you are a better worker than you were when you got here, and you understand the value of hard work. I don't care how much you bench, how much you clean, how much you squat, how much, how fast. I don't care about those things. But you've established yourself as a as a good worker. You have a strong work ethic. Like that's a that's a win for us in here. You know. So that's how we'll approach wins and losses. And from our standpoint, it's like we, we have to address these issues gotcha. or else it's going to creep up on us, you know. For sure. So are you guys at a point where 
maybe at a point it's not the best way to put it, but like, so you'll see something in a weight room, like skipping, skipping reps, like you mentioned. So, you know, if that guy say, say a wide out, are you talking to like his position coach and saying, we're seeing these things or like, does that kind of dialogue take place or? Yeah, I think it does. Um, again, that's more of the director, like coach Dawson is probably going to address those things gotcha. with the assistant coaches, but you know, there's also open dialogue if they're down here working out and they're going to ask about their guy. I mean, and then, so we meet a lot and we, we try to evaluate, we, we assess our workouts on a daily basis. We sit down as a staff at the end of the day, what do we see? You know, and those conversations could be five minutes. They could be 95 minutes. I mean, it, sure. It just depends on what you see, you know? And all we're trying to do is just get a beat on all those things that we're seeing and then address it moving forward. Um, but yeah, like, and that, that's the whole thing with having a new staff is you're trying, we're all trying to, I think everybody's trying to feel each other out, you know, and, and see what, cause I mean, some, some guys might like, we care about it. Like if you don't finish through a cone, you're doing it over. Like, sorry. Like that's what we do. That's, that's going to set you apart from the rest. So that's, we harp on finish all the time, but if it's not important to the coach, then I mean, there's no, not, not necessarily, we don't need to tell him like he's not finishing cause he doesn't care about it. Right. So, but it's important to us. So we're going to make sure that when, when we, when we are hands on, that's how it goes, you know? And the guy, they know, like, our guys know that. You know, we spend enough time with them, they know. And they know when they cut it short. And it can be, it doesn't have to, it's not, it doesn't have to be an ass ripping every time. I feel like right. a lot of people think it's like, oh, just getting in people's ass all day long. And it's not that. I mean, a lot, these, these guys are smart kids. Like, they're in college. They understand right and wrong. So you can have just dialogue with them most of the times. And it's understood and it's worked on, you know? And, it, and it's still like with, with freshmen, you have to remind them a lot more, but I, I still always feel like that's on us, not on them. And then like with our freshman class now, they should be getting to the point where the expectation is understood. Then we move from there. But you, you have to obviously establish expectation early and often. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, there's definitely that. There's the cliche of what, like, a who a strength coach is and oh. what they do um, versus what, what really happens. Um, and I don't, I don't know how often that, like, you see that across, like, just living life. Mm-hmm. But we see it a fair amount. Like, even if I'm, like, Sam, I don't know if I told you this before. Like, I've interviewed people. And, like, one of my interview questions now is, like, who do you think a strength coach is? <clears throat> and as soon as – I've had a couple of people just start walking straight through, like, every single cliche. Yeah. You know, uh, that you might think of, you know, meathead, knuckle dragger, not very smart, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Those interviews, they don't last very long. Yeah. You know? Um, and so then I'll – start reading off like some of the background of a lot of the people we work with mm-hmm. <clears throat> and it's not like because we're technology some people will get all sciencey about it but that's not necessarily like that's going too far the other direction yeah and it just always kills me like generally speaking like we were with so many great guys who just have the welfare of the kids yeah. in mind um and make them Kind of like you said, for, for where, however you get them, like figuring out what you've got, yeah. uh, making them better. Uh, it seems like people kind of have missed everything. And like, I don't know if you saw that. You see that ESPN kind of short thing they did about strength and conditioning coaches? Mm-hmm. Or, yeah. What did you think of that? I liked it. I mean, it, it definitely paints a certain picture, you know. Um, I don't think we're necessarily that way, but I'm not. I look at it as when I'm in here, when I'm in, I, I kind of look at the weight room as a sanctuary 
for the guys. Okay. When it, when we're in here, I don't personally, I wouldn't have cameras in here or if you did, it would be days that we designate and you're looking, you know, Hey, film this, film that. Cause it's not everybody's best day in here. And then with all the social media stuff and yeah. there's always people clapping back at this and that and the other, I like, I don't, I don't, they get enough of that already. Like, I don't want to add another thing on their plate to somebody to talk trash on about like that. Let's not do that guys. Cause you're not going to have your best day in here. And some days I want that. Like it's, it's okay to fail. That's something that's not taught very often anymore, but it's okay. Cause I look at it, that's a success because you've pushed yourself further than you ever have. And, and, and you can learn from that experience, you know? So in here, I want it to be a sanctuary and like, I'll be high energy in here. It's 6 AM in here. I'm ready to go, but that's, I, I do that for them, not for me. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I'm much more of a, I would like to be a behind the scenes guy and no one ever knows necessarily what we do. It's just, hey, it's it's because this is a service industry. Then let's not get it twisted. We're here for these guys. If these guys aren't here, we ain't here. So, but that's where I want to keep it. And just we're, I I I would look at it as behind the scene guys, and it's like on the sideline. I, yes, I get excited for our guys making big plays, but it's almost just like a wink and a nod. Like I knew you could do that. You know, gotcha. it's not. And then. If I kind of look at it too, is if if I if I shouldn't have more energy than our guys have on a Saturday afternoon. So I don't I don't I don't I'm just not a hype guy. Like you guys should have it. Well, to a certain extent, <clears throat> like people have per- different personalities too. Yeah, like oh, so yeah. it takes all kinds. You got to be genuine to yourself. Yeah. Like, and if uh, you know you're more a little bit more even, but get you know get the guys going and get them doing their work yeah you know, particularly like at a 6 a.m shot yeah there's different ways to do that oh there's no doubt Definitely. yeah i always look at the first Not five minutes size of, fits all yeah the first five minutes of every workout is going to dictate the next 55 minutes you know and so like let's go and then then they take it from there or maybe we have to take from there Whatever however they <laughs> right. decide. But, uh, yeah. No, I, this is, this is, to me, this is very behind the scenes. Like, this is, and all that other stuff is for those guys to do. You guys, you guys take it. You guys need the energy today. But, yeah, I, I like, you know, just watching them work, you know. That's cool. So you mentioned earlier, because I don't, I don't think I know. You mentioned you had been at a smaller school. I went to for a while. Bethany College is where I graduated from. I played football. At, it's a small school, uh, Lindsborg, Kansas, NAIA. Okay. But that you know. And that's where you graduated from. Graduated there. I coached there for a year. I coached defensive line, and I did special teams. And then also did the strength conditioning program. Okay. And, uh, but just, it was a great experience. You know, I think just like any, I, I think most freshmen, you come to school and it's just different. You know, like, this sucks. But then, some, I, I don't know if it was the people I met, my parents, it was a combination of things, but stayed. And beyond grateful that I did. Because it was just such a valuable experience. Did, think, you, did you grow up around there? No, oh, okay. I was. I grew up in Colorado, but I. Oh, that's right. I wanted. I wanted to play football in college, but I wasn't that good. So that was the that was the opportunity, and it, they they were winning. They they won conference championship. They they were a winning program. It made sense. I liked it. There was something about it initially going there that I liked and. That was the decision I made, and I'm glad I did. Yeah, but I think there's just small school education is just there's some value to it. I think you just much more close quarters. You can't hide. You know, there's no there's no classes of four and five hundred students. You know, it's like I had maybe a big class was maybe fifty kids. 
and that might be a stretch. Gotcha. You know, yeah. but you couldn't hide. You had to do the work. And I think there was value in that. And I think, you know, football is football. I mean, yeah, there, there's not a whole bunch of four two forty guys running around right. in the KCAC right now, but I mean, it still comes down to, you know, outworking your opponent, being disciplined, those things, you know. I mean, it's it's so cliche, but it it's still true. It just well, it's, sometimes it's, cliches are cliches because, because they're true. Yeah. yeah. So no, all good. So, what did you do right after that? Uh, actually came to Kansas State, volunteered. The head strength coach at the time, his name is Rod Cole, uh, former Bethany grad. Oh, that's cool. It was at like a little South connection Spot. Gotcha, and then, yeah. uh, he said, hey, you want to come up here and volunteer? We can try to find you a GA position, you know. And so I, I took that opportunity and uh, went up here. I was up here about two months and then got an opportunity to go to the Chiefs as their summer intern. And I did that. And that was right when uh, Dick Vermeule had just been hired. And it just kind of worked out where I ended up being there four years. So what was the period of time from Bethany to the Chiefs? That sounds like it was pretty short. Yeah, it was. I, so I did, the, I did the football coaching thing. So that, that spring I did strength conditioning um, we did a little bit, of, like, they didn't have summer programs. And then that fall, did the defensive line, special teams, and then recruited. And then I was done in January, so we recruited in December. And then in January, I moved up to Manhattan and started volunteering with Coach Cole, working with football. And then he got a call from uh, Jeff Hurd, was the head strength coach at the time at the Chiefs. Said, hey, I'm looking for somebody. I need somebody to do our summer internship. Have anybody? Coach Cole gave him my name. So, you know, I was volunteering. He's like, hey, this thing pays. Not a whole lot, but it pays. Right. And so, interviewed, ended up getting the job, probably because I think I was the only guy that interviewed, honestly. They just, they needed, like, they were like, hey, is, uh, you think he can cl clean a bubbler? And so, it was like, yeah. I mean, that was what you're doing. I mean, you're, doing a lot of that but it, it just kind of grew because they had they brought in so coach Mill brought in assistant strength coach Billy Long and Billy was awesome and he, he was the guy that probably taught me that it, this is a people business you know like I was I was kind of a sets and rep guy oh you gotta do it and he taught me like hey it's there's there's, there's an art and a science to this gotcha. and you need to make sure that you know people and so that that was huge and then I ended up sticking around um, yeah four years to 05 and I actually got a because I I was told a master's was important to have and so I decided I, I need to go do that and uh, Mike Barwis who was so we had, an, we had an assistant at Kansas State. His name was Marcus Kenyon. He was a GA with Mike Barwis at West Virginia. Mike Barwis went on to be the director of strength conditioning at West Virginia. And I got in contact with him, and, you know, the whole network thing. And he had, he had a GA spot. And it was, this was actually at Kansas State. He said, hey, got a spot, but I've already filled it, but I have your resume you know just stay in touch and so we actually used to stay in touch quite a bit it was you know young eager guy and right he was awesome mike Barr was awesome awesome person and uh so then when that season ended in 05 he had actually called me and said hey i got a spot if you want it it's yours but i need you here in a week yesterday and so it was kind of like i finished up i decided hey i'm gonna go do this i'm gonna go get my master's uh, they pull, like Coach Barr was pull some strings gets because it was they had already started the semester, and I get into class, and but at the same time I they also interviewed at a job at KU, and I never heard anything back, so I said oh, I didn't get that, and so I'm in West Virginia, just starting out, and uh, then Coach Dawson calls from KU, 
It's like, hey, do you want this job? And I was like, well, <laughs> I'm in West Virginia. I just took a job. And he was, and he was impatient too because they were about to start off season in sure. like a week. So it was a back and forth. And then Coach Barr was, he'd, he'd actually gotten very sick. And he was just coming back. I mean, he was like deathbed sick. That sucks. And uh, so I told him the situation. He's like, hey, doctor says I need to walk. So I'm going on a walk. Why don't you come with me? And so we go on a walk. There's a, I think it's the Monongahela, or I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it runs right through Morgantown. There's, you know, a walking path. And so we go out walking. And he, he kind of just coached me up on, he's like, hey, he's like, first of all, it's full-time gig. So you'd be stupid not to take it. And I, I was like, well, I kind of committed to you. You know, it was, it was one of those things. He's, sure. like, he's like, don't be stupid. He's like, but this is what you need to look for. He's like, you know, and there was all things I didn't know about. He's like, make sure you're getting, um, you know, a stipend for us. Like, because all, like, oh, we're sponsored by Nike. You get a little money for that. He's like, make sure you get that. He's like, make sure, you know, your benefits are right. And he's like, get them to pay for a master's. And so I go back, like, I mean, he coached me up on the whole deal. And, and, you know, I've, cause I've obviously been in Kansas in the area. So I called some friends, asked them about coach Dawson, you know, there was oh, mixed sure. reviews, whatever. Uh, not sure why, but anyways, so I'm like, I, and Barbara said to me, he's like, Hey, he's like, you're going to meet people that I like and you don't he's like, so don't listen to anybody else. You go make your own judgments. So I ended up taking the job, driving back to Kansas, wow. and then and then worked at KU with Coach Dawson, and then I've been with him ever since. So, and that's how long? Uh, what are we it's looking at here? More than once or years? twice around the sun. That's yeah, for it's sure. like fifteen years, maybe fourteen, fifteen. So I guess he ended up all right. Yeah, no, <laughs> been good. I've been. I mean, I've got to stay in in Kansas, which I the state of Kansas I love. It's an amazing place. I think you have to, I mean, you have to do some homework and, but it's a beautiful place. Like sure. People don't. Well, it's like that. Nebraska is the same way. Yeah. Right. Like people drive 70, people drive 80. Yeah. They think that's what the state is. Yeah. And then, you know, stay a while and it's not. Yep. I'm for, sure. Sure. for sure. And that's how I mean, going back to like college kids, I think that, that's another little nugget I always like to pass. I mean, you get a lot of guys that come in and, going out to eat is you know McDonald's and I'm like what are you guys doing this is stupid like you guys need to go 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 experience right these college towns because I didn't know but I was able somebody showed me and I'm like well this is pretty cool because I always I, we used to work with the draft eligible guys and they would always hang around there we'd do pro day and everybody just kind of waiting around and we would go I would start taking those guys places and they would, it would be so funny because they'd been there five years. And you take have them no idea. some restaurant or some place. And like, I didn't even know this was here. What were you guys doing? I was sleeping. I'm like, I know. <laughs> I, I don't get it sometimes. That's yeah. what, I mean, that's, that's what college kids are. Young, and that's right? been, and like football players, I mean, this has been their whole life. So they don't, they don't really know. They don't branch out. They don't know anything else. Right. So it's just, hey, this is the routine. Do you hear from any guys after they're done playing? <clears throat> yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't do any social media stuff, so I, I don't hear from... I, I think if I did that I stuff, I'd probably hear from a lot more just because that's it's, so easy. Yeah, so, so convenient. Yeah. But yeah, no, I know. I keep in touch with a lot of kids. I mean, going even back to the Chiefs and those guys, because that was always fun. That, that period of time was fun for me. Because one, a lot of those guys, like, so I was 23 walking the door. Right. A lot of those guys are 23, 25, you know, in, oh, that's in true. the yeah. same yeah. age range. And so it got close to some of those guys, stayed in touch with those guys over the years. And then even when, so I think I was, what, 27 when I go to, was that 27? 28, somewhere in there, when I go to Kansas. But, the, you know, those kids are still... You know, like your senior, they that senior class, the 05 senior class at KU, 
to me was what they were kind of the linchpin of the success that Mangino had because those guys were they were just winners they wanted to win and they were salty it was they, they were a cool group but I, I still stay in touch with some of those guys probably not as much as we used to you know, it, life you know, does that time yeah everybody. time you have a couple kids and right. it's game over you know you're just like I was trying to get to work today at 8 got here at 8.33 they're dropping boys off you know it just doesn't happen it's, it, it's frustrating but it's what it is you know when you've got young kids particularly yeah life will push and pull you around no matter what you try to do yeah. so. they'll, they'll take you to the woodshed quick <laughs> absolutely but so, no I yeah I, I stay in touch like and then that's another thing that's been cool this year is so many guys have come back because I think they want to know how their cats are going to be, you know. Like, sure. It's funny, the pride, the, the pride that these guys have for their programs. And so I think everybody was kind of coming in to check in and see what it's like. And so we've got to see a lot of guys from past teams. That's cool. So it's been, it's been fun. Yep. Here in that regard, that is definitely something that seems seems to linger. Is probably not the right word with a lot of folks. That, uh, I guess they're just into sports to some degree, but like, like I know, still know how. I mean, I'm over fifty. I know how my high school still does. Know how my college still mm-hmm. does in my sports. You know, yeah. check in from time to time. <clears throat> and it hurts when they suck. Yeah. You know the whole thing. So. Um, so was it, I'm going to jump back to when you kind of did some four you years. You said you're over 50? Yeah. Good for you, man. You didn't know that? No, I did not know that. Yeah. Yeah, remember when I had the beard? That, yeah, that's, vaguely. That thing's just pure salt now, if I let that grow out. But, Doing it. Looking good so, at 50. Yeah, trying. Um, was it, here's what I was going to ask. Uh, was it a culture shock at all for you when you started working for the Chiefs? Uh, or not as much as you think. I mean, I was green, you know what I mean? Like it was, everything was still pretty new. Um, but what I found was, is this like the guys you have, like, it's a grinder business. And I mean, Man. it's, it's a lot like college. You're, you know, I look at like a kid, kid comes in as a true, very few true freshmen play. Because there's, there's development that needs to happen right. in probably several areas. Every once in a while, you have a true freshman play, and that's fine. I don't know if it's good for him, but like he plays. Sure. Um, but I think the same thing happens in the NFL. Like Those guys, they, hey, I make a roster. And yeah, some of those guys play right. Obviously, they're a little bit more finished product, but it's, it's a two- or three-year deal for those guys before they, they make it and become pros. I mean, it's, it's hard. And so you have, you have those kids. Like that was, that was the funnest thing is you had a bunch of young guys that knew they had to go as hard as they could go to make a roster and sort of work with those guys. It was, I mean, they, those guys get after it. Wasn't like, I mean, I think a lot of people think like, Oh, NFL guys that no, those guys, the, the pros, those guys that are playing eight, nine, 10 years in the league, they have some facet to whether it be their their practice like they practice harder than anybody else their film study you know weight room i everybody kind of they, they kind of fall into their type of training or what works for them right and but as long as they they have that i mean i think that the the best pros the guys that had long careers like like we had the offensive line it was Will Shields, Casey Wigman, Willie Rofe, John Tate, John Well. Like those guys took care of themselves. It was a year-round thing. They did not. They might not have worked out at the Chiefs facility, but they were doing something. I would say almost daily. And that, and they all like look at every one of those guys' careers. Like they were all ten-year guys, and they played offensive line. You know, like. They knew what they were doing. They figured something out. Yeah, and I, I think they, it wasn't you didn't you weren't coaching a whole lot of effort because I mean obviously that that's all right you get cut or you know so that I actually really enjoy I really enjoyed that I'm sure it's different now but the whole thing's different now you know 
it, you're, you're coming across fewer and fewer metal eaters probably anywhere, you know. But, uh, no, it wasn't necessarily a culture shock. It was just, a, I mean, they, you had to learn. It's like I was saying, like Billy Long, like, you had to learn people. Right. Yeah, exactly. And there, there, was, some, there was some ego, but never, never bad or rarely bad. I always feel like there has to be some like people who ego maybe is a word that gets used in mixed ways you yeah. know what I mean but like to get that good at anything you gotta have some confidence in what you're doing yeah and and be willing to express it you know well I think I, there's there's healthy ego yeah and there's big ego I kind of look at it and I think a lot of those guys had healthy egos um, now they might have big egos in the streets or whatever what, but for us in the sanctuary of the weight room when they clocked in so it speak. was it was it was healthy they understood and then and because it just it's just a humbling place to be I mean we had we had an offensive lineman that was probably maybe had a big ego or just didn't feel like he was needed to do what was asked of him, and he was a big name guy. And I, I don't know, he was he was the first second rounder guy. And Coach Mill shipped him, like this is this is how we're gonna do it. And then so he goes. I think he ended up going to the Saints, and he would come back and visit with us in the weight room, Billy Long specifically. But he was always like, man, I was stupid, you know. So it's just, I, it's a humbling place. Yeah. You know. So I don't, yeah, I don't think you can get too wild about it. And then again, that was a long time ago. I think things have changed. Or and again, it, I don't think I can necessarily talk on anything unless you're sure on the in the in inside of it. Sure. You know. So I don't know what's going on in the NFL nowadays. It could be the same thing. But I do see, I, I feel like you see more selfishness, but that's throughout athletics. You know what I mean? We're just so much into me now. Sure. And yeah. It's really hard. And it's just, I, it's just, you know, I think social media really plays that. They drum that up because that's what gets clicks. and. Right. I always wonder if that kind of skews things. Like, so we, I mean, we work with a few NFL teams. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it's it's a spectrum in terms of like what those organizations are like. You know, you got like the Philadelphia Eagles and uh, Cleveland Browns. Uh, I've been in both those weight rooms. I've been in those weight rooms when people are working out. Uh, they're different, but like uh, like it, the Eagles was the last room I was in where I was kind of be able to like watch the experience, right? Um, and they just did work. And yeah. it wasn't, like, it was more like what you described you would like to see. Um, you know, and you they won the Super Bowl, right? So you know all the guys yeah. and that kind of thing. But uh, if there were egos around, like, there were some personalities, right? It's, oh. And that's always different than that bad ego you were talking mm -hmm. about. Like, Kelsey, like, to me, his personality is just fun. Yeah. You know? I don't, I don't know the guy. I seen him at practice a couple of times but uh it seems like a guy that would get an o-line to work you know what i mean mm -hmm. but uh i'm sure i'm sure you're right i'm sure it's experiences vary um uh, but it's always hard to know like some stupid instagram video like yeah what's re what's really going on yeah so yeah i think i think overall i, I it probably hasn't changed but just there's i mean there's a reason why it's called team yeah you know, and I think there's why do certain teams struggle? Is maybe there's too big of a personality that they're you know. There's 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 those inner workings, and you don't always. Like I I don't think you're gonna find those things out unless you're there. Right. Oh, for sure. You know. For sure. And there for a while. Like. Well, but like I you know like I look at the the Browns, I feel like Baker Mayfield. And, uh, you know, Odell Beckham, like, 
super big personalities. I don't know. And I, I mean, I don't want to talk about sports because, but it just I feel like that maybe is taking away it just what from what I see very sure. vaguely see, but. Well, it's, I mean, it's you kinda... have a lot of pieces there to be a good football team. You're not. Right. Why? You know. Yeah, Browns. It's a tough time to bring up the Browns. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just like I, that's what you always see. Like I, there should be no one bigger than the team when it comes to it's like football, especially football. I think you know I would like I talk with our basketball strength coach. You know, and that it, basketball is always just a different atmosphere. It's so family because it's small. Well, yeah. I mean, you've yeah, got you know? 16, 16 on a roster, I think. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. So. And it, it's just totally different. And they just, I think everybody is just, they're so meshed together. You know, so it's its easy. But, that, I mean, there's, it's a different game. Right. But, like, football, you have, I mean, we, we have a roster of 130, approximately. Like, that's a lot of people to manage oh for sure you know but yeah the, everybody's gotta be on the same page and things will get done yeah one of the uh, so Mark Semino yep. he did great right uh, he's agreed to have one of these chats with me and I'm kind of looking forward to no nah, that's gonna be kind a good of talking one. to him about like his experiences and, and that kind of thing so yeah there's a probably have a one or two Hopefully sessions with him. It seems like there's nah, a I lot of ground he's got that could great, be covered. Great right stories. Yeah, for sure. So for another day, of course. But uh, really looking forward to that. So you want to try some alert? Sure. Drink at work? Why not? <laughs> well, I wasn't necessarily going to mention that part, but it's audio. No one will know. So this, uh, I think Johnny got us going on this yeah. uh, so we, we really need to work on getting some sort of like a sponsorship from them but so we had um, like this high school install in Chicago mm-hmm. and I see that bottle yeah of course Johnny comes back and he's got a bottle of this and uh, I mean you know John mm-hmm. he has a hard time phrasing something in a way that's not funny uh, but he's like yeah so this you just announced it, right? And said, this is our official drink. I was like, all right. Uh, and I had lived in Chicago. And I'd heard of it. Yeah. But I'd never had it. Um, and it is definitely an experience. Only available, like, in the Chicago area. Since it says it's for two-fisted drinkers, we figured we yeah. probably were on to the right thing. So, cheers to you. Cheers. Appreciate you coming on. Yeah, why not? It's interesting. Very bitter. Very bitter. I don't mind it though. I think John got it for me because I'm so bitter. But <laughs> uh, yeah, it's. Uh, we think we'll just probably keep this as a thing. Yeah. As long as people are open to it. But I. Uh, we have had a. I had this really interesting conversation uh, with this guy Jay Thomas, who we're trying to have conversations that are a bit more broad. And just yeah, like this tight network of, of strength and conditioning or mm-hmm. um, that kind of thing. So Jay runs Factor Bikes Champion Systems, and I know we've talked bikes a little bit. You and John yeah. rode once, right? Yeah. You guys ride together. Um, so we have this great conversation, uh, but he's recovering, so yeah. we can't have Malort. But we have this conversation around it, mm-hmm. uh, and we're able to talk about performance in a different way, all these things. And I look over. And this thing's not recording. Mm. Two hours later. Son of a bitch. That hurts. Yeah, definitely hurt. Um, so thankfully, that button's not flashing this time. So so yeah. I know I got that on. So so you guys are like basically almost done. Yeah. With the regular season, right? So Two left. As we sit here, who do you have coming up? We're at Texas Tech. Yeah. And then, what's the Finish last thing? Finish with Iowa on? State here. Farmageddon. Farmageddon. Yeah. I would not heard that before. That's what they call it. But that's always a scrappy game. But yeah, it's, Big 12 is Big 12. I mean. Right. It does, I mean, records do not matter. 
anybody can beat anybody on any given day. And I, I mean, we've experienced it multiple times. So. Well, you've also dropped the hammer on a few people a few times. Yeah. Yeah, so. Don't mind that. Don't mind that. <laughs> and then, so bowl for sure. And then that'll take you, well, I guess it depends on what the bowl is, but. So I was, I was going to segue back into sort of training the guys. Like, yeah. as you start to get to this time of year, um, obviously sometimes it can be a bit of a grind, but like, are you guys doing pretty well this year? How's that going? And as far as training? Yeah. Uh, solid. Again, I, the expect, expectation in here has not changed. So they, they kind of know. I mean, there's going to maybe be some pushback here and there, but t- I mean, it, football players bitch. It, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where. You, I mean, it's just part of it. Right. I get it. It's not an easy sport, you know. Um, but it's been good. I mean, guys have. Uh, we've stayed relatively healthy. Um, we kind of we we run, you know, a leveled system. I think several places do that now. But you you know you developmental transitional travel is kind of how we divide them up during the season. You know, your developmental is your red shirts, and we're just, I mean, it's its technique. They're lifting four times a week. You know, we're, we're testing them this week, you know, but they're they're growing, and it's, and it's to kind of, you know, corral them from the rest and, and let them work together. You know, that kind of gets them to bond as a class, and they start taking on that pride. You know, I think that's a cool thing. You know, that's what's kind of going on now. Um, when you when you say you're testing them, um, just bench squat clean. Okay, that's just, what's, yeah, weight room numbers. Some, sometimes when I'm doing these and recording them, yeah, it gets a little not inside jokish, but kind of where I know what you're talking about, but I need to make sure. Yeah, yeah. Someone who is listening might not know. So bench squat clean. Yeah. Gotcha. And then uh, then your transitional guys is they they're doing a little bit more work because they're not obviously taking the reps in practice or in game you know that's your redshirt freshmen your redshirt sophomores those guys that you know your some of your walk-on guys scout team guys you know so we're gonna try to do a little bit more with them i mean because you look at this an uh, in-season period is the longest uninterrupted amount of training time you have so let's train them right you know and then then you have your travel squad where we, what we try to do is, is I feel like we've come up with some, I mean, not, it's our own form of kind of auto regulation. I think velocity based training is a huge facet of that. But if we can, you know, we use a lot of Brian Mann's work. And as far as say we try to dial in, or they we look at it as kind of in zones. We look right. at accelerative, absolute strength. We kind of dip speed, in. Speed, strength, strength, yeah, speed. Yeah, we try to dip in to those zones periodically throughout the in season. And obviously we have the elite form with our feedback. You know, we pull out, I think that the, you know, the leaderboard is, I mean, that's huge for us because it's just that, you know, that Your instant metric feedback, it's just, it's just, it helps. Like, I mean, we had, we, we stand, I was, I like some days I'd have questions whether we'd have the banter of like, I just, did more than you, right? But it's still there, and we're in whatever week thirteen. So, in I mean, super great tool. But yeah, we'll just we just run them through it, and then we'll get to bull prep, and uh, I usually try to get them back to around, you know, ninety percent of what their best is coming off of summer. Right. Um, now with the travel, maybe a little bit different. This year might be, I mean, this is all new. Oh, how about that? Power outage. It's not good. (laughs) It's not what you're looking for. No. (laughs) But yeah, so we'll do that. um, And then hit the bowl game and then they get a few weeks off and we're back at it from kind of where we started the conversation, which was see what we got. You know, makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. But <laughs> you want to try? Yeah, I'll take one. 
I don't have another glass, Sweet. but. What else do you want to talk about? I don't know. I'm pretty boring, really, I feel like. Uh, obviously, I disagree. If I finish my award, it might change. But you're the first person that's just walked through it. So, almost everybody, like, they'll try it, and you get some reaction. Yeah. But, but it fits you. Like, because in some ways, like, you're very even. You kind of remind me of me a little bit. Yeah. So, for you to just go, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, it, it <laughs> is. That was the most even keel reaction I've had. <laughs> I think Brad Schmidt at Creighton said something like, um, he could feel it in his ears. He'd never had a drink, he could feel it in his ears or something yeah. like that. And there's a whole video series, uh, like called an alert face or something. Really? On YouTube, yeah. There's also a hysterical, um, like fake commercial that these guys did. But what do you think? I think it's got a little like a bitterness to Super it. Super bitter. But it's good. It's very different. Yeah. But it's very good. I like it. Yeah, I drink this. Well, what's funny is, uh, so I introduced Brad to it. Um, we had a good conversation. And then uh, he sends me an email a couple of days later. Uh, hey, do you know how I can get a couple of bottles of that? And uh, my son was playing in the NCAA tournament, uh, had games in Chicago, so and we were like in North Park, so it was easy. So I yeah. got the shot at me with like four bottles of Malort to bring back, a couple for the office, a couple for Brad. But uh, eh, it's definitely become a thing. But yeah, you just you just walked right through it, which I loved. So. Yeah. Well, I remember, so in Lindsberg, Kansas, it's a Swedish settlement. So they have Aquavie. Oh, yeah. Swedish liquor. So that was always interesting. That was the same deal. Like, you turned 21. That was the shot. That kid. That was the thing you had to take. Gotcha. There was probably a face to that one. First time, I don't know how to remember. Personally. <laughs> it's a long night. Uh, and then we had a Argentinian tennis coach. Assistant tennis coach when I was at KU. And he'd bring this stuff around. And it was like... Black. I don't know what it was. It was some kind of like I felt like it was like fermented root. That was interesting. I wish I remember the name. But he let us like he brought the bottle and then he we, we had a party at our house and he le- or he left it. Gotcha. But I was like and he was drinking it with Coke. He was cutting it with Coke. But we all had one straight and it was like interesting. Well, people will cut anything with Coke, so that yeah, that never really <laughs> helps not, out in yeah. terms of making a cocktail. But No, I don't think so. No. Nah. I know a guy uh, from Argentina. I'll have to ask him. It was just pitch black? Yeah, it was really dark. Gotcha. I don't um, remember. Shout out Santi Murta. I'll, I'll check in with him and, yeah, see, what it and is. see what it is. We're doing show notes uh, with these, so like, you know, the references, right? Um, whether they're just fun or serious, right? So like, I'm sure we'll link out to Brian Mann stuff since you and I talked about it, but yeah. I'll see if I can get Santi to figure out what that drink is and whatever. But yeah, I should probably do some homework myself. Well, it's good to have those things on on hand yeah. like around the house. So, anything else you feel like chatting about? Mm. I mean, I keep com- coming back to Brad, but when I asked him that, he jumped into like a conversation about uh, strength coach salaries, like particularly for your first position. Yeah. Um, because obviously that was top of mind for him, so um, it just seemed like instead of me just asking questions, it's an opportunity to, if anything's on your mind. So no pressure. Not trying to trying to lead you in any direction. Yeah. Strength coach salaries, ignorance is bliss. I feel I I use that a lot. Like, don't ask if you don't want to know the answer. Because I feel like I heard once I had a kid I coached. He's now a strength coach, assistant strength coach. Makes way more than me. And then he told me, he kind of went down the list of all his guys that he works with. And I was like, I don't want to know that. <laughs> so, well, ignorance is bliss. Yeah, I, to me, it's, there's a, there's a, when he brought it up, to me there was a weirdness to it in the sense that, like obviously I manage a company, right? Yeah. And... Like, we're not going to share salaries across our group mm-hmm. because it's, like, from an HR standpoint, 
absolutely inappropriate. Yeah. But, like, you guys are in a position where those things are public. Yeah. Which, I understand where the money comes from, to, to some degree, right? But at the same time, it just doesn't seem like it should be public. So, I always end up with mixed feelings about it. Yeah, that's, I mean, that. it's, it's a, it's a super sensitive subject, but it's funny thing is it's, it's so much more a subject now than I right? feel like when it used to be. Like I did, I'm telling you right now, when I got into this, it certainly wasn't for the money. I sure. didn't like, I, the way I viewed it was, Hey, you're going to make a teacher's salary, which I feel like teachers are grossly underpaid right. by the way, for what they have to put up with. Um, but that was like, okay, well, can you live on it? Cool. But I, I never looked at this job as like, I'm fixing to get paid. Gotcha. That wasn't, that never entered into my mind. And I feel like it entered in, it enters in, like, especially young kids that is top of the list. Oh, wow. What am I going to make? You know, cause I, you know, you have conversations with kids like, oh, I'm interested in strength conditioning. Okay, well, this is what it's gonna be. Well, how much? Do I, how much you guys make? I'm like, wow. Uh, that to me is just like that's the wrong question. Right. Well, if it's your leading question. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely. Well, a if it's even on the list. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's not. I mean, I think it's much more glorified now than it probably needs to be. But. Uh, you're doing it for the money. That's, the, I think if you do anything for the money, that's the wrong reason. I think you you have to work to eat. I get it. <laughs> right. You, you have to work to eat. But if you're, if if that's high on the list, I, I, you, passion has got to be within what your job is going to be. If you don't have a passion for it, don't do it. It's not worth it. Go do what you're passionate about, and then probably you're going to be really good at it and make money doing it anyway.